This right here is one of the most unique getaways on our planet, and that's because it's an off-grid houseboat floating in a remote tropical lagoon. Call this a water B&B, am I right? When I first saw this place, I thought maybe Mark Rober was building a high-tech fishing hut, or some billionaire made it for a zombie apocalypse, but it's an actual functioning tiny houseboat that you can book a night in. But what if I told you that it only exists because of a sailor's navigation mistake? And what if I told you that now it helps support an indigenous tribe and gives rescued dogs and cats a second chance at life. And what if I told you I'm recording this intro while sitting on an airport toilet? Oh, hey, goodness. What's the hold on? Well, I've got a flight to catch. And let me tell you, getting to this Airbnb is no easy task since it's tucked away deep in the Philippines. First, I took a flight over to the biggest island of the Philippines. Then, I took a smaller flight to a smaller island in the Philippines. Then, I hopped on a boat and went to an even smaller island in the Philippines. And then, I took an even smaller boat to an even smaller island in the Philippines. And then, the houseboat itself was just a small island in the Philippines. This place is islandception, man. I started out at the restaurant, which is where the kitchen is, and it's also just kind of a nice community hangout for everyone staying here. And this is where I met Shota, Bafa Shota. He's a Japanese YouTuber and my new BFF. I ate some chicken and rice like the boring American I am, but Shoto was going for a dish that the houseboats are known for. Brack squid in pasta. Look at this. So I wonder tomorrow what's going to be in the toilet, you know? Oh, Shoda, nasty. <laughs> some of the bluest water I've ever seen. This water is as blue as as uh, something that's pretty blue. I'll tell you that much. Then it was time to go to my houseboat and see where I'd be sleeping for the night. It wasn't with the fishes, but pretty close. This place was super cool, so without further ado, it's time for a houseboat tour, y'all. First things first, we got this deck area out here. We have some lounge chairs so you can just absolutely lounge back and get some sun. We all know I could use some sun. I look like the dang ghost of Christmas past. And also we have a kayak and a paddleboard, so we can take those for a spin if we want. There's this really nice open area right here you could do like I don't know yoga or something like that over here there's a shower so we can desalinate after a swim yeehaw there's this sweet little dining setup so I could have a nice little family dinner with all my friends I brought out here that's a joke I'm alone we got some water important this right here is a nice little spot for swimming but he did say there's sea urchins over there so you got to watch out sea urchins that's how they get you. Then we're gonna step across here to the main houseboat section. This is the room. This is where the dreams happen. Bonk. This is actually so crazy. You wake up in the morning, the water is right there. Oh, they did the goose thing with the towels. I actually kind of hate it when hotels do this type of stuff because then I just feel like an absolute monster when I mess it up. There is an air conditioner, but you actually have to pay to use it. It's just like pay-per-view, except more like paper cold air and this right here is the bathroom we got a sink we got a shower another sink in here because who doesn't need two sinks up here we have one handsome dude so with the toilet they were trying to build a better mouse trap or something it's the most complicated toilet i've ever seen and the other super cool thing about the houseboat is that this is actually only half of the houseboat there's another half over here that our neighbors are staying at hey what's up hey. I, I think we're neighbors <laughs> It's like a homeowners association. I don't think you have to be part of one of those to have neighbors, but. So one thing that's really cool about these houseboats is they'll actually deliver food to you from the main restaurant via boat. So you can order up a pizza or a linguine or a fettuccine. New Lamborghini. And they'll bring it to you on a boat. May I help you from FNB department? Uh, can I get a, a leche flan? I don't know what that is. Oh, here comes the food. Wow. Let's go. So where do you want to Looks it? amazing. Uh, yeah, just set it right on that glass table. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good one. Thank you. Man, this is like Uber Eats in the Philippines. I'm trying to sound like I know what Uber Eats is. That's not even a thing in Wyoming. Um, in the words of Justin Bieber, yummy. Now let's talk about how the houseboats work. Right after I spill coffee all over myself. Oh, go oh my gosh coffee just spill all over my crotch. So on the top of each houseboat, there's a set of solar panels that connect to an inverter. This generates enough power to run the AC and lets you charge your stuff. There's also fresh spring water on each cabin, which is refilled each day by a boat. And there's a pee pee poo poo boat that comes by each day to collect waste and take it to a septic center. We've only been talking about the houseboat I'm on, but there's actually six houseboats here. And each one of them is totally unique and totally different from the others. But how did a bunch of tiny houseboats end up in a tropical lagoon in the first place? To answer that question, I sat down with the man responsible for this whole thing. So you're from Italy? Name five pastas. 
So, sorry? <laughs> it means fine? This is Paolo, the owner of the Paolin Houseboats, and everything started when he decided he had mommed his last Mia and set sail from Italy. This project was not supposed to be a business. I left Italy in 2008. I sold everything, my companies, my house, my cars. I jumped on the boat, started sailing around the world single hand, and my plan was not to stop anywhere. But when I arrived in Philippines, actually I arrived by mistake. It's such a beautiful country and people are so nice, welcoming, gentle, that uh, I ended up to stay longer and I met my fiancé here in Coron Town. This project started just because we built a houseboat for us, so it was not supposed to be a business, it was our houseboat. But after everybody wanted to experience it, so we decided to make a small business and from there became a little bigger and bigger and today a serious project. And the thing I found especially impressive is how much Paolo helps out the indigenous population with his houseboats. So the tribe in Coron Island is uh, the Tagmanua tribe. When we started this project, uh, our goal was to involve them as much as possible. That's why today we have 146 employees and 90% are from the Tagmanua tribe with oh, 16 so cool. rooms. So we decided to give work to anybody from the tribe that want to work and the pain three times more because I really didn't want to be part of this system where after one full day of working you don't really have enough yeah, money sure. to end the day for the family in a way that we can really make a little difference for the all the community so now it's really a big family we really feel part of it yeah. it's something something we are very lucky we feel honored about that paolo is so sweet you can tell he cares so much about what he's doing and the people of this island i love that little italian man we need more people like paolo in the world then I went for an evening swim and just spent a while chilling on the deck, taking in the views. And I invited our new Japanese friend over for dinner. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Welcome to Mikasa. Man, your house looks so big. So this is actually for family size of the tables, right? Mine is like maybe only for two. Yeah, people. man, this is a family sized table. And guess what? When you're here, you're family. What's that, this one? Uh, bolognese. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. Cheers. Cheers! I hear so many people say that they couldn't travel solo because it'd be so lonely, mm -hmm. but I've got to say, ever since I started traveling solo, I've never found more friends in my life. If you just have a sweetheart and are willing to meet new people, yeah. it's like you will never be alone. Yeah. I, I meet so many cool people traveling solo just like this. And yeah, to be honest, this I is was, so cool. I was traveling with the couples, uh -huh. but actually when you travel alone, you meet more people. You absolutely yeah. do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is so weird. I'm going to bed and my feet are like two feet from the ocean. That's sick. We got a big day tomorrow, so I better catch some Z's. Good night. I added in that rooster. They don't live in the ocean, you stupid heads. Wakey, wakey, y'all. So this morning we're getting an early sunrise start because I wanna head over to some of the cool beaches and lagoons in this area. And one of the biggest upsides to staying at the Powland houseboats is you can beat the crowds from the mainland to all those spots. There is the cutest little beach right here. Feels like Castaway or something. Oh, sick, a free camera. Wonder how that got there. My own little private beach. And look at this, there's nobody else. I am alone. <laughs> Just like usual. I thought this angle would look kind of cool. Uh, it didn't. This is rad. There's a little cave you can go through. And the only thing better than the nature in the Philippines is the people. All right. Oh yeah, what's your name? Diane. Diane. It's my new best friend right here. <laughs> You're a silly goose. Yeah. Then it was time to do some snorkeling. You know what they say about guys with big feet, <laughs> big flippers. Enjoy. My entire childhood spent watching SpongeBob prepared me for this very moment because there's more sea life down here than you could imagine. But as it turns out, that wasn't always the case. When we came here, the yeah. lagoon didn't have even one fish. So we wow. were impressed, why there are no fish? Zero and we find fish, yeah. fish. And we find out there was so much illegal fishing. So we started the fights every night. I was going out with my boys or the, or the tribe 
to fight with these uh, illegal boats. And uh, it took a while, it took maybe six months mm -hmm. before we were able to, to stop them. And now, when you swim on the lagoon, you have thousands of fish. You have sea turtles passing by, sea horses, you have lobsters. Now the marine life is coming back and it's incredible. I mean, that seems to be a big theme with you. You're just making this island better than you found it when you got here. Man, you're crushing it. <laughs> but supporting an indigenous tribe and helping restore sea life just wasn't enough for Paolo. So he gave me and my extremely dusty GoPro a ride to check out his animal rescue center. It's so sad to see so many street dogs and street cats. So I started rescuing them four years ago and I decided to make a proper rescue center. It's no sense to save dogs and cats from the street and put them in a cage. That is no life, it's like to be in prison. I designed these in a way they are free to, to play in, in the green, so they relax, to give a better life. So how many uh, dogs and cats do you have here right now? Yeah, now in total they are 100, so they are 60 dogs oh, wow. and 40 cats. Yeah, yeah, starting Man, to be a big that's family. Crazy. Here is uh, the, the part where we cook for them, because uh, oh. we need to cook for 60 dogs and 40 cats. These dogs are living better lives than the dogs in most middle class American families, my goodness. It would be very important that uh, we also start an adoption program because in this way we can save more animals uh, and uh, some families maybe they can adopt uh, one dog or one cat. Yeah, I think it's so cool to see someone with passion and a good heart build something that has lasting impact. And that's exactly what Paolo's done with these houseboats in the Philippines. We live only one time, you know, yeah, and also sure. I don't have my own family anymore mm -hmm. in Italy, so I'm alone and now I'm a fiance. So let's see what the future will bring. Uh, change also a lot of the perspective. After my younger yeah. sister died, uh, the perspective of my life totally changed. Man, so cool. Inspiring story. That's the end of the video. Ciao, ci vediamo presto.